In our last few videos, we worked with a lot of definitions and theorems about limits. Now in this video, we're going to do some exercises. Let's start with the first one that says find the limit of the sequence a sub n equal to n to the power 3 over n to the 3 plus n squared. And this limit is actually very easy to solve without using the definition of a limit. So what we're going to do is solve two exercises without the definition and two exercises with the definition. Let's start. We have the limit when n tends towards infinity of n to the 3 divided by n to the 3 plus n squared. So I'm going to rewrite this as the limit when n tends towards infinity of this expression but now I'm going to multiply by n to the power 3 divided by n to the power 3. Now, one thing that's important here is that n is different to 0 because n is a natural number. So this denominator and this one are both well defined. And so this expression is the limit when n tends towards infinity of n to the power 3 and what I'm gonna do is just put these two together and then these two together so it's n to the power 3 divided by n to the 3 and all this divided by n to the 3 plus n squared and again divided by n to the power 3 so now we can simplify these terms this gives us 1 these two gives us 1 and so we have that this is the limit n tends towards infinity of 1 over 1 plus 1 over n and so now we know that because we proved it in the theory videos that 1 over n tends to 0 so when n is very very big 1 won't change and the one in the denominator will also not change but this one will and it will be as small as possible so now the whole denominator will tend towards 1 so when n tends to infinity we will have 1 over 1 which equals to 1 and that is the limit of the sequence let's now solve another exercise that uses something we saw in a previous video we are given the sequence e sub n equal to 1 plus 1 over 2n to the power 4n plus 1 and before calculating the limit I'm gonna work on this expression so using the power properties we can write this as 1 plus 1 over 2n to the power 4n times 1 plus 1 over 2n but now this exponent 4n can be written as 2 times 2n and so I can rewrite this as 1 plus 1 over 2n to the power 2n squared times 1 plus 1 over 2n so the limit of e sub n this expression will be the same as the limit of this expression so let's calculate it the limit when n tends towards infinity of e sub n is the limit of 1 plus 1 over 2n to the power 2n squared times 1 plus 1 over 2n now we saw in a previous video that the limit of the product was the product of the limits so this is the limit of 1 plus 1 over 2n to the power 2n squared times the limit when n tends to infinity of 1 plus 1 over 2n we can separate this limit as long as we are certain that both these limits exist but in a minute we will see that they do exist so then we know we can actually separate the limits and everything we're doing is, is mathematically legal and here is where we're gonna use something I said we've learned in a previous video. We saw that 
the expression 1 plus 1 over n to the power n had limit e, where e was this number 2.71 that Euler described. I'm gonna leave a link there for the video. But then what we have here is very, very similar. We have 1 plus 1 over 2n to the power 2n. So if we call this expression a sub n, then this one would be a sub 2n, because when in the places that this one has an n, this one has 2n. So what this is, is a sub 2n is called a subsequence of a sub n. And graphically, what a subsequence is, is, well, if I have my sequence, a sub n, then a sub 2n would be only grabbing some of this. Or a sub kn for a general subsequence. So then if a sub n has a limit, a sub 2n in this case must have the same limit. Because it's only grabbing some of this, but it's grabbing an infinite amount. And so if the red one that has more elements tends to some number, then the blue one must also tend to some number. And in this case, that number is e. So then this limit is e squared. And on this side, we know 1 over 2n tends to 0. So the limit of 1 plus 0 is just times 1. So the limit of all these sequences is e squared. And now we're going to be solving two exercises using the definition of a limit. Let's say we want to prove that the limit of n minus 1 divided by n plus 1 equals to 1. This is also an easy expression to work with without using the definition. It's actually easier and faster to do it without. But just to practice, we're going to work with the definition of a limit. So as usual, we have to start with let epsilon be a number greater than 0. So what we want to do is we want to find then a natural number such that our sequence n minus 1 over n plus 1 minus its limit minus 1 is smaller to epsilon for all natural numbers n that are greater than or equal to this number we found n. And now we're gonna do some auxiliary calculations. We're gonna try and work on this expression n minus 1 divided by n plus 1 minus 1. So this is common factor n plus 1. We get n minus 1 minus n plus 1 divided by n plus 1. We have n and minus n, and then we have minus 1, minus 1. So we add up, they add up to 2, and we have 2 minus 2 over n plus 1. Now, n is a natural number, so the denominator is always positive, and we have a minus 2 in the numerator, so the absolute value of this expression is just 2 over n plus 1. So then, continuing with our auxiliary calculations, we want to find n such that 2 over n plus 1 is smaller to epsilon. Then 2 over epsilon will be smaller to n plus 1. Remember, epsilon was positive, so this smaller than symbol does not change. And then we have 2 over epsilon minus 1, smaller to n. So now that we've finished our auxiliary calculations, we got to this expression. We were able to isolate n from this expression. So now, what we say is, take n, this natural number I want to find, take it equal to the ceiling of 2 over epsilon minus 1. Then 
if n is greater to n, this would mean that n is greater to 2 over epsilon minus 1. And then working on this expression a bit, we have that n greater to 2 over epsilon minus 1. We have n plus 1 greater to 2 over epsilon. And then epsilon greater to 2 over n plus 1. If you realize what we're doing here is actually going backwards on these auxiliary calculations. And so this is exactly what we wanted to get. Because when we have epsilon greater to 2 over n plus 1, we have n minus 1 divided by n plus 1 minus 1 smaller to epsilon. And this would be for all n greater to or equal in the ceiling of 2 over epsilon minus 1. So someone gives me a number epsilon. It can be super, super small or super, super big. But in general, we want it to be small. And I found this n that depends on, exi on epsilon because it's 2 over epsilon minus 1. So every time someone gives me a new epsilon, I calculate this number. I, all I have to do is take a natural number n that's greater to this number I calculated to know that this will happen. And this is the definition of limit. So then the limit when n tends to infinity of n minus 1 over n plus 1 is equal to 1. And to finish this video, we're going to be working on a slightly different exercise. We have to prove that given this sequence, a sub n equal to 1 over n plus the sine of n divided by n plus 1, we have to prove that this sequence has limit 0. Let epsilon be greater than 0. Again, we want to find n such that a sub n minus 0, my sequence minus my limit, is smaller to epsilon for all natural numbers n greater than or equal to n. So, let's work a bit on a sub n. The absolute value of a sub n minus 0 is the absolute value of a sub n. And this is the absolute value of 1 over n plus sine of n divided by n plus 1. Here we can use the triangular inequality to say that this is smaller than or equal to the absolute value of 1 over n plus the absolute value of sine of n over n plus 1. And now what we're going to do is we need to make this expression smaller to epsilon. So what we're going to try and do is make this expression smaller to epsilon over 2 and this one smaller to epsilon over 2. This way when we add these two expressions up we have an upper bound for a sub n equal to epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, which equals to epsilon. So now again we go on with the auxiliary calculations. Let's try and make 1 over n smaller to epsilon over 2. Well, again, n is a natural number, so 1 over n is always positive. So the absolute value is just 1 over n. And now when we isolate n, we get that 2 over epsilon is smaller to n. So here we found one lower bound for n. Remember that we want the lower bound to be capital N. But now we also have to make this other expression, sine of n over n plus 1, smaller to epsilon over 2. But if we remember trigonometry, we know that the sine of n is smaller than or equal to 1 for all n. So then this expression, the sine of n over n plus 1, is smaller to 1 over n plus 1 in absolute value. So then 
what we're gonna do is write this as the sine of n over n plus 1 this is smaller 2 1 over n plus 1 and we're gonna try and make this expression smaller 2 epsilon over 2 because it's just easier to work with than the sine of n so 1 over n plus 1 smaller 2 epsilon over 2 again n is a natural number so this expression is always positive and so the absolute value is just 1 over n plus 1 so now 2 over epsilon is smaller to n plus 1 and 2 over epsilon minus 1 is smaller to n and here we found another lower bound for n now that we've done these two calculations that gave us the lower bounds we have to choose n so what we're gonna do is take n as the maximum of these two values of 2 over epsilon and 2 over epsilon minus 1 the maximum between these two values is 2 over epsilon because this one is 2 over epsilon minus 1 we are actually subtracting 1 to, to this other expression and epsilon is always positive so then this maximum is 2 over epsilon and we're actually gonna take the ceiling of all this just to make sure that n is a natural number so what's happening is if n is greater to n that is the ceiling of 2 over epsilon then two things will happen first we have that the absolute value of 1 over n will be smaller to epsilon over 2 and on the other hand we have that the sine of n divided by n plus 1 will be also smaller to epsilon over 2 and if we remember the bound we had for a sub n we had that 1 over n plus the sine of n over n plus 1 was smaller than or equal to the absolute value of 1 over n plus the absolute value of sine of n over n plus 1 but now we can make each of these smaller to epsilon over 2 and this equals epsilon and this one is our sequence minus 0 whenever someone gives us an epsilon we take this natural number n now we take another natural number that's greater to this one and we know that our sequence in this number will be smaller to epsilon it can be as small as possible meaning it's as close as possible to zero so then the limit of a sub n is zero